In part two of bones and bone structure, we'll take a look at the anatomy of bone tissue and the various bone cells that make up bone. So bone tissue is actually a connective tissue. We classify it as a support connective tissue. So I put here it's a dense supportive connective tissue. Now we're going to see that it contains specialized cells. There's four of them. We'll introduce them in a couple moments. We're going to introduce a cell called the osteogenic cell, the osteoblast, the osteocyte. Now that you may have heard of before. We typically talk about that when we talk about the tissues chapter. And we'll introduce the osteoclast. Bone tissue has a matrix that is solid. If you were to just tap on any bone, let's say you tap on the outside of your elbow and you feel your bones and that make up your elbow, those bones are solid. Um, they also have though some collagen fibers. These collagen fibers we're going to see in a moment keep the bone flexible so our uh, bones don't shatter. And we'll discuss that in a second. Here are some characteristics of bones that we should know already from the tissue chapter, but I'll review them real, real quick so that um, we know that bone has a dense matrix. What makes the bone dense is the deposition of various calcium salts. The cells we're going to see that maintain the bone are the osteocytes. Now, you can just call these bone cells also, but we mostly call them osteocytes. These are located in little chambers or little pockets. And these osteocytes are organized around blood vessels. Um, we're going to see that bone is extremely vascular. Bone is a very active, dynamic tissue, so it has a really good blood supply. Our osteocytes, they can communicate with one another and um, there is an exchange of nutrients, waste products, and gases through the bone. This all happens through these little narrow, small, tiny canals known as canaliculi. Right? So these are just narrow passageways. I'll show you these in part three of this lesson. Um, these are narrow passageways that run through the matrix. And again, their job is to allow for the exchange of nutrients, waste products, and gases. Like I said before, bone is a very dynamic, active tissue. One other characteristic of bone is that bone has an outer lining, a covering, known as the periosteum. Peri here, this prefix means around, right, like a perimeter. And then osteo means bone, right, so it's something that we would find on the outside of the bone. If we were to dissect it, right, kind of look at it more closely, we would see that it has two components. There's an outer fibrous layer and then an inner cellular layer. We'll look at these uh, in a little bit more detail in lesson number three. So let's take a look at the bone matrix. Do me a favor. Highlight here. Bone matrix is made up of minerals and then go down over here. It's made up of proteins, matrix proteins I put here also highlight and then we'll go back and talk about it the minerals make up two-thirds of the bone matrix right so the majority of the bone matrix is going to be the minerals one-third if you can highlight here please is going to be the proteins so let's take a look at the minerals first so like I said guys two-thirds of the bone matrix is made up of calcium phosphate now this calcium phosphate is going to interact with another bone salt right here called calcium hydroxide. Once those two interact, they form this hardened crystal right here known as hydroxyapatite. This is what gives the bone the um, hardness. As the hydroxyapatite is forming, it incorporates other calcium salt such as calcium carbonate 
it's going to incorporate ions and we put over here like magnesium fluoride would be another one that would be incorporated into the hydroxyapatite so all of that makes up the hardness of the bone now if you took a bone and you took away the hardness the, the minerals we would end up with a bone that looks like the bone except it would be very flexible right so a bone lacking calcified matrix it's going to look normal but it's going to be flexible and the reason for that is one third of the bone matrix is made up of these matrix proteins which is down over here now the matrix proteins are actually collagen fibers all right, so one third of our bone is collagen and that what that allows for is to give our bones a little bit of flexibility this is an experiment you could actually do at home it's kind of fun to do you can take a chicken bone put it in vinegar right vinegar is acetic acid and the acid will dissolve the bone salts leave it there for a couple days maybe like a weekend or something like that when you take the chicken bone out you'll see it looks the same but when you pick it up you can bend the chicken bone because the mineral salts are gone and all that remains in the matrix is the uh, collagen fibers which allows for that flexibility so all of this is what makes up our bone matrix again the main things I want you to know um, one third I'm sorry actually two thirds of the bone matrix is made up of minerals the final product is hydroxyapatite it incorporates different bone salts and ions and then the other one third of the bone matrix is made up of collagen fibers so let's take a look at bone cells the bone cells only make up about two percent of the bone mass but there's four types that we need to know we're going to take a look at osteogenic cells osteoblasts osteocytes and osteoclasts so osteogenic cells um, also are called osteoprogenitor cells some textbooks uh, use this term um, this seems to be a newer term but uh, you should know both because they, they, they use them both these are mesenchymal stem cells so if you remember from uh, tissues chapter mesenchyme means embryonic connective tissue and their job these stem cells is to make sure that the bone has adequate amounts of osteoblasts which we're going to talk about next so the stem cells make sure that we have osteoblasts osteoblasts we're going to see are important in forming new bone now this is a picture from the martini book they did a cross section of the shaft of the bone the diaphysis and we find these osteogenic cells located on a lining that lines the medullary canal this red lining right here is known as the end osteum we also find them where the periosteum is out over here All right, so those are the two places that we would find osteogenic cells on the end osteum and out where the periosteum is so here you can see it this is the uh, endosteum because what they did is they kind of blew up this area right here so we can see here's the endosteal lining it makes up the endosteum cells and then here's a big osteogenic cell and like I said this can uh, produce osteoblasts so that's where they're located so think about this um, especially in an adult when we're not growing anymore we're no longer forming our bones um, if we were to fracture a bone these osteogenic bone uh, cells are important because they can produce the osteoblasts that we need to heal our bone to repair our bone right, so they are important uh, especially as an adult in fracture repair all right, so this is from the martini book let's take a look at what tortora's interpretation is i actually like this diagram they do a good job with this so here first of all they're calling it the osteoprogenitor cell and so martini calls it osteogenic tortora calls it osteoprogenitor so i'm going to have you know both names 
this is what the cell looks like. Now, when it's stimulated, say from a fracture or something like that, it will now produce the next bone that we're going to look at known as the osteoblasts. So I like this picture because it's showing the progression from one cell to the next cell. That brings us to the osteoblast. A blast cell, whenever you hear the term blast right here, means that it's an immature precursor cell. It's going to develop into a different type of cell, or it's going to yeah, change into a different type of cell. So it's an immature cell that produces the bone matrix. Here's the word you want to highlight right there. Osteoblasts produce new bone. The process of producing new bone is known as ossification or osteogenesis. I'll talk about that in part four of this lesson. Now when the osteoblasts produce their matrix, the matrix doesn't come out hard. That has a, that's a process that has to take place called calcification. So the matrix that's produced that is a not ossified, we have a term for that. We're going to call that the osteoid. Here's a picture from uh, Martini. So out here is where the osteoblasts would be. Right, They're going to be in the um, periosteum out over here. As the osteoblasts lay down new bone, they're actually going to cause the bone to become wider out over here, and the bone's going to grow in width. So what we can see, here's the osteoblast. You can see they're around the circumference of the bone. And now the picture is showing us the cells producing the matrix. The matrix, though, they painted or colored in blue to indicate that the matrix is not calcified yet. Once it calcifies, it's going to look like this. This is matrix that's already been formed and hardened. So this would be the osteoid, right? So the osteoblast produces an uncalcified matrix known as the osteoid. Eventually, the osteoblast is going to become trapped in this osteoid, which is going to harden. Then these cells are going to convert to osteocytes. That would be the mature form. Let's take a look at the Martini interpretation of this. So here's our osteoblasts. We had said previously they were formed by the osteogenic cells. Now they're osteoblasts. They produce the matrix, right? They form the matrix. Once they become trapped in that matrix, they're going to become an osteocyte which is going to be the next cell that we're going to take a look at. And this job of the cell here, the osteocyte, we're going to see is no longer to make the matrix, but their job is going to be to maintain the matrix. All right, so here's an osteoblast right over here. You can see it's a small cell. They had to magnify this 8,000 times to see that cell. It's tiny. Once the osteoblast again has become the osteocyte the cell is considered a mature bone cell um, that does not divide it's just going to stay uh, as it is we know this already that the osteocytes live in the small little pockets or cavities or chambers however you want to term it known as lacunae right? and those lacunae are within the matrix the um, osteocyte has these, we'll take a look at it, these cytoplasmic extensions. So it's oh, like an octopus. Here's the osteocyte. And then it has these little arms going out through it like this here. And it, here's another osteocyte way up in the corner here. These two will actually communicate with one another so materials can pass back and forth through these little baby canals known as the canaliculi, the canaliculi. The major function of osteocytes is right here. A site cell maintains. A blast cell from the previous slide produces. A site cell is going to maintain. So its job is to maintain the matrix. If the bone were to become damaged, like in a fracture, and the, the osteocyte is removed from its um, 
lacuna, it can convert back to an osteoblast and help with repair, like fracture repair. But on a normal day-to-day -day basis, you know, when there's the bone is healthy, the job of the osteocyte is going to be to maintain. The last thing I wanted to point out on this picture is where we find them is notice they're not on the inner edge here. They're no longer on the outer edge here. They're trapped in the matrix. So we're always going to find the osteocytes trapped in the bone matrix. Let's take a look at Tortora. Again, I like this progression. We'll kind of review it one more time. Osteogenic cell produced the osteoblast. Osteoblast made the matrix. Once the osteoblast becomes trapped in the matrix, it became the osteocyte. And again, you can see the osteocyte is like an octopus. It has all these extensions right over here. And here's one living. Here's the lacuna. Here's the osteocyte. You can see it's a bigger cell. They only had to magnify this 4,000 times. Right? So maybe it's twice the size of this cell over here. But that's the osteocyte. Again, maintaining the bone tissue. The final cell is known as the osteoclast. Now the job of the osteoclast is to break down bone. Right? So if you remember my example with that chicken bone, if you put it in um, acetic acid, that chicken bone would be dissolved by the acetic acid. It breaks down the bone salts. Take a look at this. The um, osteoclasts secrete acids, right? So the acids are going to break down the bone. That process is known as osteolysis. Osteo, you probably know, means bone. Lysis means to break down, right? So it breaks down bones. All right, so their job is to absorb and remove bone matrix, right? If you want to just make it in simple English here, it helps to break down bone. If we were to look at these cells they're actually big cells that have multiple nuclei they are not derived from other bone cells they're actually produced by the bloodline of cells uh, the cells that make up blood uh, the the, the yeah, where the blood cells come from for example you'll learn this later in your your uh, anatomy physiology studies there's two um blood cells, monocytes and macrophages. These are what we call phagocytic cells. They tend to engulf things and break things down, kind of clean things up. So they're uh, deriving the osteoclasts. So let's take a look at it. This is from the Martini book again. So we can see here, it's a, uh, this happens to be located on the endosteum. And we'll talk about why they're there later um, when we talk about bone remodeling. But nonetheless, it's a big cell. Look at the size of this thing. It has multiple nuclei. And then it has these little extensions right over here. This is where the acids are going to be released. They call this the ruffled border. So that as the acids are being released from here, it's disintegrating the bone matrix over here. So why do we need to have this um, done? Um, maybe there's a time when our blood calcium levels are low for whatever reason. We need to have adequate amounts of calcium in the blood. We can break down the bone a bit to release that calcium into the blood and bring our blood calcium levels up. So you can think of the bone as a, a storage place, as a bank of calcium. All right, we'll talk later uh, uh, in, I think, uh, the fourth lesson or third lesson, or the, maybe the fifth lesson, we'll talk about remodeling. Here, the osteoclasts are also important. Okay, so this is the Martini's interpretation of the osteoclast. Let's see what Tortora uh, looks like. So notice, again, I like this picture. They, they put a line here to show you that this cell is not produced from these guys over here. They don't come from bone cells. They come from the bloodline. Large cell, multiple nuclei, again, ruffled border. This is where the, os the acids are going to come out. And the job is to break down the bone. And, and here's a picture of one. You can see it's a big cell. They didn't have to magnify it that much. They had to magnify it 2,700 times to, uh, to see it.